His was a kingdom, vast, prosperous, and healthy. His subjects were very happy. Almost all of them were wealthy, too. The roadsides were adorned with jewels. There was prosperity to show everywhere. But yet, the king was sad. For he was worrying about the future. The future of his son, who was supposed to take over the kingdom. For the prince was no erudite. Neither was he Mark Zuckerberg to worry about a village online. He, like any other teenager, not Zuckerberg, but someone like me, was worried more, more worried about the girls at that age, not now, spending money that, their, that his father made, had no responsibility whatsoever with respect to administration, politics, or royalty. That got the king worried. Despite his numerous pleas, the prince never heeded, and he still went on spending time, wasting his time with his friends. But the king said, enough is enough. Son, I want you to own up. I want you to take up responsibility and show me that you are capable of leading this kingdom. And then, only then will I crown you the prince. So, our prince felt that time had come, he, he can no longer play around, decided he's got to do something. He goes back to his two friends, one of whom one of whom is a son of a rich treasurer and the other guy is the son of a prime minister. He goes to them and says, dudes, I can't come and play with you anymore. I got to prove my dad that I am worth something. So I have to do something today. At which point, the prime minister's son says, guys, you are right. Forget about your kingdom. Forget about your wealth. But me, my dad says that I won't be able to marry if I don't prove him my worth. That's more important to me, finding a girl. So they all huddle up together and then come up with a plan. The prince says, let's go to the northern part of our kingdom. There's supposed to be gems, lots of them. Let's find those gems and come back and show or prove our worth to our parents. So the plan's done. They decide to go there. But little did they know what was supposed to happen there. They told their parents that this is what they're going to do. And they set off on their journey. They go past rivers, and dense forests, and everything else. And they finally reach the mountain. They knew that they had to cross the mountain to reach the valley, which is where they would find all these jewels and gems. They made it pretty easily, I should say. They were courageous enough. They went there. They weren't too greedy. They just wanted to prove their worth. So they picked up a gem each, a huge one at that. They were all set to come back to their kingdom. It was time that they had to plan how to get back with their jewels which is when one of the friends says, guys, we know we didn't face any adversities when we were on the way to the mountain, but now we have the jewel in our hand. I'm pretty sure there are thieves and bandits lurking around in the dark in the forest. What do we do if they come and catch us? What do we do with our jewels? All our hard work's gonna go in vain. What do we do? To which the prince says, Let's do this. Let's break up our gems, put them into fruits, and swallow those fruits. They will stay inside our body. Even if the bandits were to catch us, they would have no way to know that we have the jewels with us. They agreed on this plan. 
they found some fruits, sweet fruits, broke, broke the larger jam into small pieces, stuffed them into the fruit, swallowed them whole. But little did they know that there was a robber lurking behind the trees, listening in on them, knowing each step of their plan. So he decided, let me play along with these guys. I know what they're up to. I know I can't face all the bandits who are going to attack them when they get into the forest. Once they get out of the forest with their plan, then I can rob them because I know where the jewels are. I'm going to cut open their stomach and get the jewels out. So he approaches these three friends and says, hey stranger, he was a Toastmaster himself. <laughs> strangers weren't, he, he didn't have a tough time with strangers. He introduced them, himself to them, said, hey, I'm so and so, not a thief. I'm so and so, and I am lost in this forest. Can you please help me find my way? All I have to do is follow you, and you don't have to worry about me. These three guys thought, okay, he doesn't seem harmless. Let me go ahead. They invited him. Come along. On their way back, they entered the forest. It was dawn, and they decided that they want to rest for the night. No problem so far. Just when they were about to rest, they heard a loud commotion. All of a sudden, they were attacked by these bandits. <laughs> by these bandits that they were expecting, almost at least. The bandits pulled them, took them to their chief, and then the chief asked, guys, I know you are coming back from the mountain valley, and I know you have jewels. That's the whole idea about this. So give me your jewels. The kid said, I'm sorry. We don't have any, but you could search. The bandits searched them all. They found nothing. So the chief decided, they seem to be innocent. They don't have any jewel on them. Let them go. But as they were just stepping out, the chief called back, wait on. You know what? I think you have the jewels on you. Let's wait until tomorrow morning when I'm going to cut open your stomach and get the jewels out of you. At which point, the thief, something dawned upon him, and he, it made him realize, I have led a sinful life, and this is my time to correct it all. I'm going to sacrifice my life to these kids so they can go scot-free. Come morning, the chief called upon all those, all the four, and he said, I'm going to cut open your stomachs and get the jewels out. At which point, the thief, the robber who had befriended them said, Chief, let them go. You can cut open my stomach. If you find the jewels in me, that means they have in them too. If not, they don't. So the chief cut open his stomach. He found nothing. At which point he said, guys, I'm sorry, you were innocent, but I killed one of your friends. You're free to go. Three of them went back happily, thanking their stranger friend, not knowing that it's better to have a sensible enemy than a foolish friend. Thank you.